This is the Boss Game E3 Mini PC, powered by Intel's Twin Lake N150 processor, 16GB of RAM and built-in Intel UHD graphics. I bought it because I needed a replacement for my aging MSI QBN with an Intel Celeron N3150, which has served me well for almost 10 years as a home theater station. In this video we will unpack it, take a closer look at the specs and then put it through some real-world tests. Benchmarks, file transfer speed, video and photo editing, gaming, office work and finally the main reason I bought it, smooth 4K video playback. All right, so I would say let's get right into it. All right, this is the E3 mini PC from Boss Game. So this is the Ecolite series. And this packaging is very compact. And here you have the specifications, as you can see here. So this is the E3 model, which comes with the Intel N150 CPU, 16 gigabytes of memory, 512 gigabytes of storage, Wi-Fi 5, Ethernet 2.5G, and an input 12 volts, 3 ampere. All right, so nothing more on this box. Here it says just multifunctional mini PC. And let's open the box. And here you can see immediately the mini PC from Boss Game, but we'll come to it later. Let's check the accessories here. And here we go. Here you have a visa mount, so you can mount it directly on your PC screen and the back instead of mounting it somewhere else. Very nice. Then you have the power adapter for sure here. So it's not USB-C, so this is a bit of a downside, but anyways, for this price, that's fine. You have a separate PC adapter here. And then for sure you will get an HDMI cable. So I think this is not a must, but it's nice that it's included. So, but I don't need it. I have so many HDMI cables, so nice to have an additional one. All right, and you have here the user manual here for this mini PC for the Ecolite series. This is in English and German, so that's perfect. So because we're here in Austria, German is a must. And for sure you have it also in English. You can see there are a lot of descriptions. Also when you open it, you can see what's inside. This is also very nice. And also 12 months guarantee. Yeah, so if you need it, just check it and I don't need it. All right, so basically that's it. What's in this packaging here? Let's put this aside and let's check the main player, the Boss Game Mini PC here. So on the front, you have here the on off button. You have an audio check. So as you can see here on the icon, it shows a headset. So I assume it's also compatible with a the microphone. Then you have a USB-C, also very nice. Two USB-A here, 3.0 I assume because they are blue inside. On the left side, there is nothing else except some openings for the fan. And yeah, on the back side, you have the DC connector here. You can plug in the power resource. You have two HDMI. You have again, two USB-A here and an ethernet port. So this is very nice. And on the other side, you have here also just openings for a better air circulation. On the top, nothing else. It's very clean. So you can see here, you have uh, some design elements, that's it. And on the bottom you have some rubber pads that it's not slipping away when you put it on a table. Here you have a flap. I think when you open it with a screwdriver you can also open it here very easily to add more RAM or change the SSD. Okay, and in the end I think that's it. Let's have a look at the tech specs now. Now that we've got it out of the box, let's take a closer look at what this compact machine is capable of. The Boss Game E3 mini PC is powered by Intel's Twin Lake N150 processor, a 6-core CPU up to 3.6 GHz. Designed for quiet and efficient multitasking, perfect for web browsing, document work, video calls and smooth 4K media playback. It comes with 16GB of DDR4 RAM and a fast 512GB MVME SSD, making it responsive even when switching between multiple applications. On board, you will also find an Intel UHD graphics. It's not designed for gaming or GPU-heavy content creation, but it does cover the essentials 
for media consumption or productivity. Connectivity is solid, with dual HDMI ports, USB-C for triple display setups, four USB 3.2 ports, a 2.5G LAN for fast networking, plus Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 5. The Intel UHD graphic runs at a frequency of 1000 MHz. And all of that fits into a compact fan-cooled chassis that's ultra quiet and energy efficient. Honestly, getting this much functionality in a system that I grabbed for just around 150 euros is a great highlight. And at the moment, it is even cheaper on Boss Games website. All right, now that we know everything about the specs, let's turn it on for the first time and set up Windows 11 Pro. Yes, you heard right. It even comes pre-installed with Windows 11 Pro. As you can see, the installation process runs fast and smooth with no issues. I connected the E3 mini PC directly to Ethernet, so there was no need to set up Wi-Fi. Although I really appreciate that Wi-Fi is built in. After entering some basic info, Windows 11 was fully configured in about 10 minutes and ready to go. The only thing left was to search and install all necessary updates. That part took a bit longer, but now we are all set, safe and sound. Next step, I will now run some real-life tests. Even though it's obvious this system isn't made for heavy workloads, I will start by measuring fan noise under load using Cinebench 2024 to see how quiet it really stays. My result under full heavy load, it reaches up to 50 decibels, but normally you wouldn't use it that way. So in real life, it averages around 35, 36 decibels, almost unnoticeable. Speaking of the benchmark, as you can see, it took a while. So I fast forward the main part and the results were as expected, pretty low. In multi-core CPU usage, the four times 800 megahertz processor reached only 87 points, 10th place. But to be fair, all other systems in the list are much stronger than this one. The second test, the single CPU test, wasn't better either. After quite a long processing phase, it reached only 35 points, so even lower. But the same conditions apply as mentioned before. Therefore, it also reached last place. Okay, let's continue with the file transfer test. The ports the mini PC comes with are pretty decent. First, I tested the USB-C port on the front, which you can also use to connect a monitor up to 4K 60Hz. Pretty impressive for such a small device. The file transfer of a 10GB file from an external SSD, the fast Samsung T7 Touch, was super fast. It took me only 15 seconds to transfer a 4K YouTube video of mine to the local SSD. In my second test, I used one of the USB-A 3.2 port next to it, and here it was a bit slower, but still fast enough. It took me 25 seconds to transfer the same file to the local SSD. So no worries if you want to stream videos from an external hard drive as well. All right, let's continue with the other tests. One quick heads up. Due to the already performed Cinebench 2024 test, I do not expect this PC to perform well in video editing or gaming. Maybe in photo editing, but let's see. Oh, and one additional thing, I had to record some scenes twice, because at first I tried to use screen recording software, but that already consumed too much CPU and RAM which distorted the final results. So I decided to film the screen with my camera for those scenes. Just so you know why I'm switching perspectives from time to time. Anyway, let's open a video editing project in DaVinci Resolve 20. Normally I work without proxy files and edit my 4K material in real time. This time I switched the timeline resolution to 1080p, but even then it stutters and playback is jerky. And I'm not talking about complex stuff. It already struggles with basic playback or jumping to another sequence in real time. So I would not recommend doing any video editing on this PC. Also, the export times are way over the top. 
it would take too long. So this test failed as expected with this onboard GPU CPU combination and I aborted the export. But let's continue with Photoshop. I loaded a large raw file from a Sony a7 IV. This is dressed in Italy, by the way, a beautiful city and applied some adjustments to see how long it takes. That's okay. You can edit the basic stuff in raw files in real time and I think this is really usable. Let's see how long it takes to apply my personal benchmark, denoising the picture with AI. All right, 24 minutes, that's quite long. In comparison to my MacBook, it takes around two to four minutes. And on the Snapdragon laptops like the Lenovo Yoga Slim I've already tested, you are good in around nine to 10 minutes. But let's start it anyway and fast forward. Yes, it took around 20 minutes, so doable, but you waste a lot of time in this process. The rest is okay. You can load it as a copy into the main Photoshop editing page, rotate the picture, crop your content, apply some filters for a more artistic look and resize it. This works pretty well. Also exporting it as a PNG or even better, a JPEG works without any flaws. So I would say you can use it for simple Photoshop tasks and that's really great. Well, and now my favorite test section, gaming. But let's be honest, with basic Intel UHD graphics, this part will probably be over <laughs> pretty quickly. But anyways, let's start with an older game from 2016. Fun fact, this game is as old as my former MSI mini PC. The cool thing about this game is that it already includes a benchmark test, so let's run it. As you can see, it's already pretty jerky, but at least it doesn't crash at all. The fan noise reached 45 to 50 decibels again, but this is expected when pushing the mini PC to its limits. All scenes went through and yes, sometimes it looked better, but overall, I don't think you would enjoy playing the game with an overall score of 11.30 frames per second. Anyway, let's have a quick look at the actual gameplay. As you can see, I'm playing it right now. But is it fun? Not really. Especially when you need to time specific scenes in milliseconds. You just can't do that here. So this game is a fake. Let's see if the game control works. All right, this one is even worse, as you can see now. By the way, in both games, I used the lowest resolution, disabled everything and used the lowest possible settings. But even then, control performs very poorly, as you can see right now. So let's skip it and continue with Fortnite. In my case, zero build mode, because the fewer extra animations, the better. I changed everything to low settings and enabled performance mode as well. Fun fact, it's playable. I mean, I wouldn't recommend it because it's still jerky, but I managed to survive a few enemies. Driving a car was decent. Yes, it started from time to time, but in the end, the main reason I failed was that it lagged during a one-on-one -on -one fight. So I lost anyway. And to be fair, I think all three opponents I faced were bots, <laughs> so also not really a recommendation for gaming on this mini PC. But it performed better than the other two. All right, I would say let's stop here. I think it won't get any better, so let's do a quick test for what it is built for. First, let's do some basic browsing. As you can see, this works smoothly in the Brave browser as well as in the Microsoft Edge. No issues as expected everything performs very well. Then let's open Word and this script here. No problem, you can edit everything, formatting your document also works without any issues. Using Word templates, loading time is almost instant, editing is fast, so far so good. Okay, let's switch to PowerPoint. Again, everything works as expected. The template loads, I can change text, and even the built-in Microsoft Copilot function, so the AI assistant, can help you pull in information directly into your document without switching to the browser. I really like this part. And it's very convenient. And speaking of MS Copilot, let's open it directly. And here we go. It responds very quickly. You can chat with it and it generates the answers almost in real time. I like it. This really helps in daily workflows 
so nothing to complain about here. And finally we get to what I actually bought this mini PC for. Smooth 4K video playback. For that I will download VLC, my favorite video playback application. The VideoLang client plays 4K videos very smoothly without any lags and you can even stream via Ethernet. Very convenient. It also supports a bunch of formats so I never had any issues playing back any media. I really like that. Scaling the player window and changing its size doesn't affect performance at all. So for my use case this was a huge win and I will keep this tiny boss game E3 mini PC. Alright, we have now reached the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed my review and tests of this little buddy. If you have any questions feel free to post them in the comment section down below. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe here somewhere if you want to see more tech reviews from me. Oh, and if you want to keep watching right now, here's another cool video right here from me. Take care, stay healthy, and I will see you in the next one.